G'day, I'm Marcel Jackson, a mathematician at La Trobe University. Uh, I'm trying to show you about algebras that they won't show you at high school. Uh, so we, you may have seen me talk about an algebra before that dealt with the scheduling of events. That was a very simplistic model where events were just a point in time. But in reality, when we're asked to, say, brush our teeth or move a container at a, 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 dock, a dockyard, then we have something that actually takes some duration in time. So here I've written up some preliminary information. Let's imagine time is going in this direction. And we have some um, events X and Y. And they take some amount of time. Now, the only thing is here we're going to ignore the precise duration of time, just use the fact that they have some time. So this here would correspond to a situation where two events, X and Y, are related by the property that X finishes before the start of Y. And in fact, well before. There's a little gap. This one, on the other hand, corresponds to the situation where Y starts immediately um, at the end of X happening. This one corresponds to a situation where Y starts before the end of X, but finishes after the end of X. And I've listed some other possibilities here. So there are six here, but in fact, X and Y could be related oppositely. So for example, Y could have occurred before X would be the opposite to this one. And there is also the possibility that X and Y end up being the same. Or occur at exactly the same time, in which case we really get 13 different possible relationships. This algebra is called Allen's Interval Algebra, and it's really um, used quite a lot um, to model qualitatively about temporal reasoning. So an instance might be that we could, where we could work with this would be something like these following events here. Marcel snores, brushes teeth, and sleeps. Now, we would know that you can only snore when you're asleep, and you would typically brush your teeth before you sleep. So that might be information that might be given to a computer, and then it would use the known behaviour of these relationships, hopefully to deduce something like, I brush my teeth before I snore. Okay? That's something that obviously follows from the fact that snoring happens while, so during sleep, so this is a bit like sleep and snoring. Um, and the fact that we brush our teeth before we go to sleep should tell us that we also brush our teeth before we snore. Um, so this is obvious to us, but how does a computer work with this? Well, we have a, a table. It's quite a big table. There's 13 different relationships here, so we get 13 by 13 ways to compose these, and we use this to reason about these kinds of events. There is a, another model here that's used for qualitative reasoning about spatial concepts. Um, this is called RCC8, so Region Connection Calculus. And here, instead of intervals in time, we deal with blobs in the plane. And again, we have possible relationships. So here are two blobs that don't overlap at all. Here is another possibility. Um, a third one might be that we're inside but touch and so on. So these kinds of algebras are used to reason about spatial or temporal reasoning. <coughs> 